we now proceed for our next topic on role of hysteroscopy in art practice i would like to invite our next speaker dr prakash trivedi he is the current president of isar and sir has been the past president of foxy and iag over to you sir it's a pleasure to talk for the important fem conference of mogs and especially as an isar president on a subject which i enjoy to talk uh, that is peeping inside the uterine cavity in infertile and art patient and i think so it's one of the most important part of infertility and art practice hysteroscopy is usually quite underutilized and because most of the organization doesn't make it compulsory before infertility ivf or advanced infertility treatment however if you have patient who is having scanty periods thin endometrium history of mtp very tuberculosis septum suspicion of intrauterine adhesion fibroids or polyp then you may go with a tvs then hysteroscopy which is of course done rarely but it is one of the thing now the biggest issue is why most of the people don't do hysteroscopy in all because which pathology are anticipated because you don't get that many pathology as you anticipate but in today's time after a good sonography you can find many situations wherein you can have hysteroscopic procedure either a surgery uh, infertility is a different issue proximal tubal obstruction spontaneous miscarriages and uh, various other aspects of hysteroscopy comes into picture obviously all of us have three four ultrasound machines ourselves so we can detect a fibroid polyp we no longer actually need diagnostic hysteroscopy for routine procedures because all these things can be easily picked up by sonography now obviously myomas polyps adhesions septum can be picked up but of greater interest is endometritis or subtle lesions which can be uh, mucosal elevation polyposis then endometrial defects and all this becomes good when hysteroscopy has a clear look so hysteroscopy in an infertile patient is like looking inside the incubator where the child is going to be born so if you don't look at all at the incubator you know what are the results obviously we have moved from regular hysteroscopy to office where in miniaturization allows you not to even take a speculum not to hold the cervix just gently go Uh, guide the optics. Uh, this can be done, or this is done without anesthesia, but can be done even in patients who are keen to conceive and not yet married. So, for example, if you want to evaluate a cavity, now this is a polyp. You know, you can easily make out a polyp, and uh, you can go around, and you can easily cut. There are important protocols of polypectomy. where in which polyp can be removed there is something in relation to xc also that during xc if there is a polyp what you do then you catch hold with the polyp grasper and remove it septums obviously a large number of people started believing which i don't agree about that caesars does less harm so we are used to caesars we are used to monopolar we are used to bipolar i think so it the man and the brain behind the current intensity which is more important because if you were not to use cautery laparoscopic surgery would not have been there sometimes you may have a very large polyp and this is sometimes very important because a very large polyp occupies a significant amount of space and though it is not a fibroid again this can be removed and it is pretty simple and uh, all this actually it doesn't need uh, general anesthesia but uh, you need operation theater setup you do, you can't say i will do it in my consulting room and that's the polyp grasper and the polyp is pulled out so hysteroscopy through office procedure can be very unique especially in an intrauterine adhesion where you don't have any idea so you have to just follow the crypts follow the folds 
you will start and you will identify certain crypts opening. So now you get an idea that there is, uh, you are in the right plane. Uh, in intrauterine adhesion, very often people perforate the uterus before actually starting the adhesiolysis. So this is where you now you've entered a cavity, you create a good cavity, and then you can move, move forward. And there are a lot of other things which you can do with an office hysteroscopy procedure. Uh, polyps, as we discuss, may be significant, but it is not that all polyps have to be removed because some may have influence, some may not have influence. Like this polyp, which is exactly at the corno, can have a significant defect. And uh, the other polyp, if you saw, it was bilateral polyps. Then cavitary fibroid, all these things will come in the way of fertility and resectoscopy becomes very useful. Uh, this picture, I, I think, so most, most of the people will think this is tuberculosis, but this was 33, 34 year old patient who turned out to be miliary metastasis. So you have to remember that you can get situation wherein you may have a surprise finding. Cumulative pregnancy rate doubles up when you remove a proper polyp. And when you remove a proper polyp, uh, you, you can have at least one out of three patients having pregnancy. This was in relation to ICSI, and it's interesting that if you have done ICSI and you find a polyp during, you have done a pickup and you find a polyp, if the polyp is less than 14 millimeter, there are evidence to suggest that transferring the embryo doesn't affect the result even if you normally we feel that there is a polyp, let's avoid transfer, but it is scientifically incorrect. You can go ahead and transfer. Obviously, submucous fibroids, you will have huge ones. And I think so Minu herself is aware, you know, about the quantum of hysteroscopy and laparoscopy work, which is there in India. Uh, you can have large polyp and resectoscopic surgery, the old art, which urologists has not changed. But in Gynec, because of miniaturization, it has gone to office. But you have to remember, you if you use a small office scope for such a big resection, probably will spend the whole day and remove nothing. So re doing resection with a proper current, most of the people prefer bipolar. I still am very comfortable with monopolar, not that this is a message which I'm giving. But you have to remember that don't damage the normal endometrium and follow the protocol of how to regenerate the endometrium and then you can decide. Cumulative pregnancy rate if fibroids were left inside were far less and you can have 63 to almost 70% pregnancy rate after removal and these pregnancies are quite often if other factors are normal, it is spontaneous. Uh, you do get situation uh, especially wherein there is a bone inside the cavity, there is a foreign body like a broken hook. And uh, I had this patient, especially seven years of infertility treatment going on, and there was an IUCD inside. So, uh, in fact, when I did the sonography for the first time, then I realized. And you can see that lateral incision wherein the J-shaped hook was broken. And uh, you have to remove this uh, foreign bodies from inside. Intrauterine adhesion is one of the most challenging part of hysteroscopic surgery. And there are randomized control trials and other trials which suggest intrauterine adhesion you can be master to create a good cavity. But you're still not a master with a strong embryo because you can create a cavity, but you cannot regenerate the damage in all situations. So you may have pregnancy rate, which may be 30% or 50%. A very good hint for most of the people is uh, after hysteroscopic adhesiolysis, within a week, you do follow-up hysteroscopy because you can break those adhesions. Live birth rate can be 10 to 35%. Obviously, the prognostic factor for intrauterine adhesion is the type of adhesions and how much normal endometrium is present. So you have to prognosticate on multiple factors. 
visibility of one ostia, both ostia, not, not visible, amenorrhea, finding on ultrasonography, and all those things may guide you what you're going to do. Obviously, as I told you, and this is what AHL was clearly emphasizing, which is going right now, that you can really create a very good cavity as a good hysteroscopist with office or with conventional surgery. But this doesn't necessarily transfer into live birth rate. So there are still, after all this thing, you can have abortion, you can have recurrent pregnancy loss, you can have preterm labor. So you have to give proper things and there is no point in putting just an IUCD or a police catheter. You have to regenerate that endometrium and you can add many things apart from just estrogen. You can add many other things which can be beneficial. Obviously, periods do return. Fertility is improved, but incidence of abortion and preterm labor, labor doesn't go down. Whenever you see a little dimple, it is said that if the dimple, the residual septum, if it is less than 10 millimeter, don't bother about that septum. There are growing evidence to clearly suggest that secondary infertility, you have to do septal incision because uterus is a myometrium, septum is a fibrotic tissue. So to dis divide the fibrotic tissue after a delivery, it is necessary. Now there are growing evidence to suggest that in unexplained infertility, presence of a septum when they removed the pregnancy rate and live birth rate were 34 to 38%, whereas you kept it, you had a disadvantage. This is very interesting that after a hysteroscopic septal incision, when is the right time to do ICSI or the embryo transfer? Uh, it is found that you wait for two cycles, that is eight weeks. So around nine weeks, it is the maximum time when you can uh, plan and go ahead for the treatment. You don't have to wait for two months, three months. And this is st statistically very clear that you can have 46% pregnancy rate. Occasionally, you may be surprised. Uh, a bulge, and this is where I had done the sonography, and I know that the bulge posterior was actually having hypoechoic collection. So I was pretty sure what I'm, I'm dealing with. So we went ahead and then we started resecting. And this is something very interesting you will see as we resect because uh, I knew that this is not a fibroid. So we start resecting. Again, monopolar, bipolar, I think so. It is just personal uh, comfort. If you master the art of resectoscopic surgery, any instrument can be all right. Now, if you see here, when I'm resecting, you will feel as if there is a perforation posteriorly. Now, we resect further because it is right posterior wherein we had uh, seen that there was an hypoechoic area just below the endometrium. Now, that area, anybody will say, oh, it's a perforation. But you see chocolate coming out from there. So this is an adenomyoma. So you can have occasionally an adenomyoma and if you have diagnosed this as we had done, then you go to the root of the adenomyoma and then give probably simple treatment, which may be maybe simple depot. And if uh, tubes and other things were normal, then she will have good chance of uh, pregnancy. However, you can imagine if this adenomyoma is there and if you transfer an embryo, it goes and lands up there, you're not necessarily going to get it. But here you have to be careful. Don't be over enthusiastic that while trying to remove the entire adenoma, you remove a lot of endometrium because that is not the right way of doing. At some part, you may coagulate the base. Now, one of the commonest procedure which is done in Indian scenario is proximal tubal obstruction. And this is one of the most rewarding surgery. From 1997, when Cook's Novi Scout catheter came in, it revolutionized the treatment of proximal tubal obstruction. And we have close to around 1,200 patients wherein we have done hysteroscopic cannulation from 1997 till now with 90% unilateral patency, bilateral patency in 70%, 50% pregnancy rate. And the beauty about this is they do have pregnancy again. So this is one procedure which is largely popular more in Asia, India, and certain countries uh, for obvious reasons. Finally, you have to remember 
hysteroscopy is a surgery of art resectoscopy we are not talking about pcre and this and that so you have to be very clear that what instrument you are using if your pathologies are small or you know if you know only office hysteroscopy then you please make it clear to yourself you you are not a hysteroscopist because in office hysteroscopy you can deal small pathology when a morselator is running inside i feel like it's like a small mouse which is nibbling a little small small piece so don't get carried away by company hysteroscopic story is hamu comes there is one pump bitogi comes there is another pump bigardi comes there is other device so all this because i am hysteroscopist since 1992 so i clearly know that the, what what is good so you have to make use of standard hysteroscopy become also good in office hysteroscopy because office hysteroscopy is easy though in india most of the patient don't like it without anesthesia but office is done in a proper operation theater because what they claim to be office abroad is not like the offices which many people have here in india so finally the most important thing is hysteroscopic surgery is very important in infertility and in situations of polyps of mucus myoma it is very useful intrauterine adhesion and metroplasty depending on the severity of adhesion it will give you the result but you have to remember that you will give estrogen you may pa- pass um, uh, the uh, prps and you may also use stem cells and so many other things to see that the lining improves because you have to get improvement in the lining obviously getting into the cavity cavitary fibroids are definitely to be removed we will not go into details about the other part but its junctional zone fibroid also needs removal hysteroscopy is an art which is not an option for an infertility consultant if the art is not in you you find out a good hysteroscopist who supports your program of art which adds too much of value sometimes even more than laparoscopic surgery i hope that uh, most of the things you wanted i have conveyed through and i congratulate reshma pai and everybody and minu whom i know very well uh, for conducting this program thank you very much thank you sir I think this was a very very comprehensive talk. Thank you so much for that. What is your preference for a uh, resectoscope, vis-a-vis an office hysteroscope? Yeah, no. What happened is we had uh, approximately three thousand TCRs and more than twelve hundred plus big fibroids, and these fibroids are, uh, uh, in fact, in a live workshop we have, we have removed from the cavity seventeen fibroids. so resectoscopic surgery was an art if you have picked up you have picked up if you have not picked up you will be always scared yeah. urologist does yeah. this surgery in your other ot for 50 years without any uh, fuss so resectoscopic surgery is useful but you cannot undermine the importance of miniaturization so you can have a smaller resectoscope mm-hmm. but i don't agree with the typical office hysteroscopy people that i want pathology according to my liking zabo bursi who is the designer of the needle holder a veterinary surgeon always used to tell ki don't ask the tissues to respond as you want you respond to the pathology which is in front of you so both are important but both has different level of skill in one the cable is always upwards or the cable is always backwards in one typically it's always spinal or general anesthesia in another preferably it is vocal anesthesia we do it under short g thank you so much sir i think dr trivedi has really uh, very elaborately covered this topic thank you so much for this thank you bye take care